Us. Hello. Us. Hey, Mitch. Us. How are you? Yeah, good. Good to see you again. You Thanks too. for coming along. No, thank you. Today we're going to go back to the Core 54 because last week when we were talking about the Core 54, we actually brought up. I think we're going to go back to the Core 54 simply because we mentioned the footwork patterns. There's a gazillion different ways to use footwork. The whole idea of the core 54 is narrowed down. So we've got 30 basics, 22 kata. You look at the, I extrapolated everything and I came up with the notion that probably to get from white belt to black belt in Kyokushin, there's about 250 to 300 techniques, basic techniques you have to learn. Is that a fair call? Okay. And applying Pareto's law, the 80, 20, which Mitch actually introduced me to many years ago, um, about 50 to 60 techniques would represent 20% of what you're doing. So I looked at that and uh, developed what I call the core 54, which basically, if you think in terms of 80, 20, do a Pareto's law on it uh, and look at what 20% of everything you need would be the most practical and useful in the long run, I came up with what I describe as the core 54. And that includes out of the 16 stances, if you basically focus on the Sanshin, Zen Kutsudats, Kor Kutsudats, Kibadachi, and your default fighting position, those five stances will cover pretty well 80% or more of what you know, definitely in kata, if you think about it. And then I had five footwork patterns that we work on to develop the fundamental skills. And I really believe if people work on these five fundamental footwork patterns, it covers a lot of territory. And, and if you do nothing more than those five footwork patterns uh, until you're about a green belt, what will happen is you will develop a really solid uh, foundation of footwork. So remember in stand-up fighting, the footwork is what allows you to express your technique. Or fair call. You, you may have the best. I always say Mike Tyson can't knock me out. He's nothing because he's 10,000 miles no away, luckily for me. Yeah. But if his footwork was that good that he could get within range, then I'm in big trouble. Within range too. Yeah, within range too. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the only thing that's going to get Mike Tyson to make his phenomenal punches to knock me out is the footwork he needs to get from, I think he lives in uh, Vegas, all the way to here. So he get his footwork onto the airplane, off the airplane, and <laughs> knock on that door right there. And if you want to see some footwork... <laughs> <laughs> I'll be looking for exits. <laughs> but anyway, so today I thought we'd look at the five fundamental footwork patterns. If you're interested to write them down, and basically what they are are uh, a... In Japanese, the sabaki movement. Sabaki just means to move. So uh, the footwork sabaki is simply the circular footwork that takes you out of the dead zone. Okay. Then you have what's called the oiashi or kuriashi, the back foot moves and then the front foot moves. And then you have kosaho. Kosaho is just a Japanese word which basically just means a switch. So your upper body stays there, your feet switch, very deceptive. So we're going to look at those patterns now. I've brought Mitch, but he's the younger version of me, just uh, a lot better looking. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> and, and I'm going to ask Mitch to do those patterns. So let's have a quick look. First of all, what we'll do is we'll start off with basically, uh, well, I think probably the one that needs most work is the switch. I mean, is the split. So the split is, a, as a concept, I'm fairly confident to say that we introduced it to Kyokushin. And it was introduced to me by a good friend of mine named Tony Quinn. Everyone used to think we're brothers, but we weren't. So, you know, okay. So, basically, the split—it's called a split. If you watch, yeah, if you watch Mitch, just do the first half of the split. So, the split: one foot goes one way, one foot goes the other. So, back to normal fighting stance and split. You see how one foot goes out, one foot comes out. Why do we do that? It's boom. The reason we do it is if you have a look at my back heel, my back heel is off the ground. 
What's that going to trigger? Stress shortening cycle, elastic energy. Okay, so can you explain what the stretch shortening cycle is? It's a natural innate um, like tendon reflex that's in a lot of our tendons. So if anyone's been to a doctor and they test your knee and they hit the um, patella tendon or the quad tendon, you'll, you'll get the knee flick. Well, the same thing happens in all of our joints. So the elastic energy that happens when you bounce or when your heel's off the ground and you replace it, if the contraction is short and explosive, you'll naturally get a, a, a natural energy recoil in a, in a direction. Exactly. I couldn't have said it better myself. So, in the dojo, we describe this position with the knees are bent, my elbows are in, my hands are up, and my dominant head position is directly at my front quarter. This is the default position. That's your fundamental default fighting stance. And always your heel is off the ground. Sometimes it becomes the front heel. So if I'm here like this and I want to split to the side, well, then what happens is my front foot, which the heel is down, goes there and the heel lifts up. So I get the tendon reflex that way. It just increases the speed of your technique considerably. Okay? And you don't have to be super fast, you just have to have the heel. If my heel is flat off the ground, I have zero tendon reflex. So I have zero opportunity to take advantage of the body's natural uh, gifts, all right? So that's the downside of plotting with your feet flat to the floor. You always encourage your students to have that heel up. So when they move, it's always going to be a, a speed. Okay, now, when we do the split, the reason the back foot goes back is to take advantage of that tendon reflex, okay? We need to take advantage of that. And that helps us to push forward when we need to. The reason the front foot moves off is because I don't want to hang around in the dead zone. So if Mitch is facing me, and I throw a punch at him, he does the split, immediately he's moved off the center, and then he takes advantage of that stretch shortening, and as it comes through, he moves off the target altogether. Okay, so this, this alone, We've worked with guys on it, and this this is the foundation of all the good fighters that I've ever worked with. The foundation of the footwork. I remember when I moved into um, the hangout in Brisbane in the late nineties and training there, and the first thing we were doing warm ups for ages is split, split, just move two rounds. That and then the 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 sweet right, right, sweet left right. right. I was like, yeah, every day, every warm up, that yeah, was really um, something special. Yeah, exactly. and it really does help the footwork. And in fact, if we do nothing today other than the split, it's time well spent because uh, uh, it makes such a difference. So I checked that message. What's my Shuko Kokoro, the spring and the heel, the kick shot? Fantastic. And it does become, when I used to throw my front kick, I can't really do it now because my knees are shot, but I do this, this hip movement here like this, and I come forward back like this, and then I drive back to get the, the spring. And you get the speed coming through of the um, stretch short cycles there, like that. And it adds a little bit of velocity to it rather than just trying to pull it off the ground. And you, you let the tendon help you along. Okay, so the first split is what we call a left split because it's going to the left and it's used against the right front here. So we'll go here, first of all, see, see, uh, against the left front kick. No, no, you would. So what I'm going to do is throw, where are we? No, against the right front kick. There, boom. So that's what I'm doing. I'm throwing the front kick, or even, if I could, the roundhouse kick. Okay, there. Now, the way Mitch deals with that, as a general rule, we always block right kicks with right hand. Because this is his insurance policy for Cox Cone. Okay? So as I throw the kick, Mitch blocks it. Now, under normal fighting circumstances, that wouldn't be enough because he just knocked him out or he's dead, okay? So what he would do is as we're moving, as he does that block, he does the split. And then that allows him to kick that one or even yes, whatever. You see the idea? So right now he's in my dead zone. He's in the killing zone here. I throw the kick, he splits, and bang. Okay, now, before I can do anything, he, he kicks, he, he shakes back to default, 
with me in his dead zone. Before I can do anything, I have to reshape to my dead zone, uh, to my uh, default position. Okay, so he's already in his default. So hit, one, boom, bang, and he's hit straight there. He's in default. I'm not, I have to turn around. So that's where some of the other footwork, particularly the course I hold, would come into play. So for example, if Mitch throws in front of me, boom, the blocker, kick, step. Now, he's in my dead zone, but I'm not in his. So if he was to turn around to face me now, I simply do the other one, which is um, sabaki, to keep out of his zone. So watch what happens. I throw the kick, boom. He, he kicks. Now for me to turn around, he simply keeps moving, yes. And he constantly moves out of my dead zone. So he kicks me, boom. One, step, face, you see, as he, he has to turn a lot further now, and he's still not comfortable because his right foot's forward. Okay? He has to turn a lot more to get around. So the whole idea of footwork is to keep you in your dominant position whilst constantly taking him out of his. Okay? Hey, Vin, well, it's good to see you. And Harry, thanks for coming along. Okay, so that idea of the split is a comp it's called a split because it's like doing the splits, but it's like a combination. It's doing the splits, but it's like a combination of the front foot taking you off the target and the back foot getting that tendon reflex to take advantage of. Okay, we'll look at that again. So just watch, actually, I'll just get you to do this. We go left and right. So the left split one, good. Now we do it, we turn 90 degrees each time. It's boom, and he's back to the goal. And stay there, stay there. Pitch, knee, sun, chi. Good. Now, that's the left split. It's the easiest because the left foot's forward. If you go right split, what you have to do, you know, stay with the left foot forward. If you go right foot, what we have to do is back into the circle. We actually come up to yoi first. So I go here, yoi, step, and then right side. So we do that in one motion. So we're going to split right now, pitch, and I step back then. Good, again, left foot forward, split right, we need to go back to yoi first, but we, the front foot gets the tendon reflex, because as I step back to yoi, I don't put my heel down, I split off like that, see? So I'm here, pitch, and I step back, good. Again, pitch, that's it, good. Now this is super fast, so you can actually use it if someone comes flying in on you with punches and stuff. You literally just do the step and you can walk away. Just like that. But for the sake of drilling, we 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 go itch, knee, come, G. Good, like that. So that's the right split. So we go, what I will do in training as an instructor, we go left or right, I go left or right. So left. Left, right, left, left, right, left. And you keep going like that so that the reflex of the listening allows you to uh, work the, the drill. So that's the split. Now, we take the split an extra step. So now what we do is, as I throw the kick, I throw my I, I front kick, Mitch blocks it with the split, and he continues with the counter kick straight away. Okay? Yeah. So you develop the habit of blocking and countering immediately. You don't counter next week. You take advantage of your own. You've got two um, uh, tendon reflexes going on. You take the, there's one, and there's the other. As the step comes around, you think there's one, there's the other right there. Okay, so you take advantage of that and you make sure. Okay. So we practice that as by ourselves now. So we split left with the thigh kick. Pitch. Knee. Tongue. Chi. Like that. Now when you go right, it's the same thing. So if I try the left, he's still left foot forward. If I try a left front kick, he, he splits right. Boom. And kicks right. Yeah, splits right, kicks right, bang. 
like that. So when we drill it as, uh, by ourselves, we split one, two, and then the right foot goes back to back to feet again. You split one, two, back, pitch, pitch, and you make sure the hand comes up in cross cone. So that's basically the uh, split, okay, in a nutshell, and there's great levels, there's three or four levels more of that that we use all the time, okay? And that's really, really a valuable drill to work. The next one we'll work on is what we call the sabaki, okay? And sabaki is not hard at all, but there's little secrets to it, okay? So the whole idea of sabaki is this. We are facing our partner, and I want to think in terms of his fighting stance. I want to think in terms of outside of his foot. See, right next to his foot. And literally, it doesn't even hurt if you stand on his foot. The whole idea of the core of the sabaki is that I need to get from the outside line by placing my foot right next to his. Now, here's a little secret. Where does power come from? Power comes from hips. Okay, yeah, we get you in the power. Where does speed come from? Speed comes from the chest. You don't see sprinters in the 100 meters on the blocks with their chest back. Ready? They're not like this. What they are is they do everything they can to get their chest as far forward as possible so that when the gun goes, all they do is they take their hands off and drive. Okay? So speed comes from the chest. But rotational speed comes off the shoulder. So now if I want to turn, I turn off the shoulder. But if I'm not used to it, I can overbake it. So I'm here like this, Mitch throws a punch, I turn like that, and if I overbake it by overdoing the arm, I can spin too far around. So I temper it with the hip. So I like to think rotational speed comes off the shoulder, controlled by the hip. So now when I move, there like that, I have the shoulder ready. And that's a fundamental, uh, what we call the sabaki step. So we go slow now, but I want to go right as his punch comes in. There, see my foot goes to his foot, and then I rotate around here. So I'm in the ball, he still has to turn around. Yes, okay? So the right sabaki is simply slip, my right foot goes here. And then I rotate my shoulder, and then my left hand, I can kick my right foot if I'm comfortable, but I come back to the fall with my left foot forward. So here again, he comes in, I switch like that, put my foot there, and rotate. But if he goes, say, one, two, throws a one, two, one, two, my foot comes forward. Notice my left foot now has come forward in line with his front foot. I can't take it all the way back, it's too far. His back foot. But if I can get my left foot in line with his uh, front foot, which it is, it's hard to see. You just change that angle slightly there. You can see my foot now is in line with his foot. Then I use my shoulder to rotate there, and then I can follow. I can even use a tendon reflex. So when I turn, watch my leg and my shoulder I rotate. See that movement? That's taking advantage of the tendon reflex. And Rip. So we do that, we used to do that in the, uh, remember we do that in the splits. So you, go, you literally go one, two, three, four, like that. And just develop that uh, wave motion. Okay, so the second footwork drill we call uh, sabaki. It's simply from there, the punch comes, one, two, my foot goes forward in line with his, and then I rotate out, and then I can step back. All right? To go right, I come from here, my foot comes to his foot, and I rotate out like that. So I maintain my dominant head position whilst he's out of position. Okay, that's the second one we call uh, sabaki. Okay, any points, any comments? Mitch is much better looking than you. Of course. <laughs> you just keep up so <laughs> Okay, the next one is simply, well, there are two fundamental footworks in Japanese, oyashi or kuriyashi. Like I said, oyashi is when it's the foot, so Mitch and I, oops. So we both face this way. 
which is in front. All it is is just that sort of movement. Yeah. So just in there. And in karate, they're really good at bridging that gap because it's not common for a boxer to ever change sides. Go to here and to get in range, have to be in range two. But a good oyashi movement, I could be in range one or even beyond range one. So this try to kick at me. Pull my step back, I'm still in range one. Bang! I just drive through with that large, long um, oyashi. Okay? So it's oyashi, oyashi, same thing. Good point. Oyashi, oyashi. So we're here, and it's just simply step through there. And you can disguise it. I used to disguise my footwork like this. We'll get on to that in a second here. Kuriyashi. Okay? But if you want, bang. You keep coming forward with it like that. So, oyashi is simply that. So, we can be here, stay in it. We can be here, and we step through it. Me. Some. And then we turn that one like that. Bitch. Me. Some. Like that. Now you do that in. Ido Genko, in Zenko Tadachi, Oishi, Itch, Ni, Sam, Mate, Itch, Ni, Sam. Okay, so the same principle at play there. That's Oyashi. Okuri Ashi, Okuri means to send, okay? You could be talking to someone and say, I'm going to send you a birthday present. Present or Kurimas, okay? I owe you money. So no kane okurimas. I'm going to send that money. So okuri ashi means I'm going to send that foot. So the back foot comes up. Yes, no, no, for sure. Yes, no, no, face the same direction. Yeah, like that. So the back foot comes up to the front foot. Front foot steps out. One, two. Good. We turn around. Same thing. Look, back foot comes up. One, two. Bitch. Knee. See like that? Well, like that. Hips. Notice there's one thing, the hip plane and the head plane and the shoulder plane don't come up and down. They stay at the same level. Yeah. Good, like that. Okay? Hello. Hello. A <laughs> couple of kids walking past. Want each his autograph. Okay? So there, back foot comes up. This is called a half. Shuffle or hand or kudiyas. It's notice the knees stay bent. Back heel is off the ground. That's important because when I kick through, that's where the drive comes on for the next one. Okay, or kudiyashi. Good. Now the other or kudiyashi is what I call a full shuffle. So now the foot comes through here, all the way through, and drives on. So. Yep, so the next one. Good. So it's all the way through. Back. Knee. Good. Mind deep. Itch. Knee. Good. This seems like it may be a think it's like overdoing it, but this is probably the footwork that I've used most in real situations. Not in tournaments so much, even though I used to use in tournaments, and I do it like this, which I was saying I'm high some footwork. I move around here. Form and move my feet backwards and forwards like this, move it forward and back, and then I go and step in like that. Then get the timing right here, forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, and then go forwards. In a real fight, often what I do, I never had a fight in my life. But if I did ever have a real fight, probably maybe what I would have done <laughs> is this I would come in and drive my forearm and hand up in the face. So I'm here like this, and then I go bang, and I drive through. And it's very, very off putting. I'm here like this, and I travel bang. Look, drive through, drive through, and right there now, my hand in front of the eye has no idea what's coming. And then as this foot comes through, bang, you replace that hand like that. It's um, very, very effective. And this is the main application in Taikoku Kata. There's two variations. The first one is one, the hand stays there, step through. Second one is one, hand comes up, and some people say that has no application. It has a ripper application. I'm here like this, I step through, bang, push it in the chest, drive through, and then here. Okay? 
Okay, very, very practical. So, oyas, uh, or kuriyashi. From there, back foot comes up, half shuffle, one, two. Back, one, two. Full shuffle, the foot goes all the way through. One, two. Back, one, two. Like that. So I know they say you shouldn't cross your feet. Doing this with full force is very different to doing this sort of thing. Okay? They're not the same. Okay, the next one is uh, the corsa hole or switch. Okay, the whole idea of a switch, generally speaking, yeah, similar to the Gary step. Oh, it's Bogdan. Good to see you, man. Um, generally speaking, the corsa hole is. Um, before I do that, actually, let me just continue on with the oyashi. So the oyashi can also be the fundamental thing. The basic oyashi is as I step forward, I use my forward foot. So when this comes forward, the first foot step is the front. One and two. Good. One and two. One and two. Now when he goes back, Back, that tells you which foot he's going to use. You use the back foot first. Back foot, so the back. Itch, knee, sun. Good. Come forward, itch, knee. Good. Now, when he goes to the left, tricky question. When he goes to the left, which foot does he use? Even you can get that. Nearly. Nearly 50% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> left foot goes first. So he goes sideways, left. Good. Left. Where do I do that? Well, I could be in a ring and my guy's trying to get out of the corner and you're trying to shut him down. So I move across the ring. So when he goes right, he moves his right foot first. I'm trying to get out. He's, he's keeping me in his dead zone and I'm trying to move around. I can't. So I go this way, he goes left again, left again. Okay? I step back, he goes forward. Okay? I come in again, he goes back. That's your fundamental footwork drill that everything begins with. Okay? That's the first step of Oyashi. Because the leading foot moves. Okay? We also call the step through, well, that, and there's a couple of names, we also call that oyashi. Now, the split, not the split, the switch, which is korsaho, basically Mitch's upper body remains exactly as it is when the switch, when the piece switch is out of it. So you see the upper body, the left hand is still forward, hands are still exactly the same. Come back. So from there, switch. There like that. And what's that, what that's good for is a deceptive move. So he can throw a one-two punch, and then he does the split, and then round has to be pulled. Okay? So again, one, two, boom, bang. That's how he's going to step up the front leg, round has to be. So he switches, one, two, uh, yeah, it's a switch, and then what he's going to do is take advantage of the tendon reflex and drive off the back leg with the round has to be. Okay. okay, so that's the uh, the corsa or the the switch. Okay, again he switches and then straight away from the boom, like that. All right, uh, it's very similar in many respects to the split because if he wanted to kick off the back leg or with the back leg, he does a split, bang, and then he gets the ten reflex there like that. Okay, so that's a good drill. But here, like this, and he does one or the other, and I'm reading his body language. Okay, and I pick it up, give him an opportunity. Keep my cocks coming up all the time. Okay, and then if you want, you can take that a step further. So he throws the kick now, and I counter with the kick of my own. He throws the kick, and then we move. Okay, that's a good drill to employ that switch split. Okay, both ways. Oops. Oops. Thanks, man. Thank you. Good. So we'll come and sit down now and have a chat. So they're the basic five footwork patterns that we use. Bogdan, the, yes, indeed, the Gary step began with the split. And I'll tell you, and Mitch can confirm because Mitch was in the Uchi Deshi dormitory with Gary for probably six months or so. Uh, he was in and out when I was there. He wasn't right. there. He'd already time. finished. Yeah, okay. he he'd Japan. finished his. Yeah, he was in Japan. So. But uh, Gary spent more time on his footwork and the timing of his technique than anyone I've ever known. Um, so, anyway, they're the five footwork patterns that are part of the uh, core 54. So, you have the splits left and right. 
you have the sabaki, which is simply the circular motion where you place your foot in line with their front foot. If it's the right foot, well, then it switches that way. If it's the left foot, it's in line with theirs, and you rotate using the rotational force off the shoulder. Okay, that's the second one. Then you have the oyashi, which is the basic stepping, which can be the step through, but it's also front foot for going to the front, back foot for back, left foot for left, right foot for right. And that's a really good way to start um, white belts on their footwork journey. Remember, everything is determined by your ability to bridge the gap with good footwork. And it's really important and probably underestimated in terms of uh, how much time needs to be spent on uh, on good footwork. And then the next one is okuriyashi, or in English, half step and full step. And then kosaho, which is the switch. switch. It's not just, by the way, kosaho is not just to set up with the uh, kick. So kosaho isn't just to switch for the kick. What it can be is a deception too, so I can hear like this, I'd switch like that, okay, and then I can just come in straight away like that. So it can be used in that respect as well, uh, not just with kicks, but also to be deceptive with punches. Of course, you know, when I was such movie is generally called Tenshin, simply meaning shifting movie, very good. Considered different. Yeah, interesting. Um, tai Sabaki is probably different to Sabaki. Tai Sabaki um, is you know, moving your body left and right, maintaining balance and, um, I'm presuming, could be wrong, and and uh, maintaining control of your dominant position in alignment. That's Tai Sabaki. Um, whereas the Sabaki footwork that we use is just simply the concept of circular motion around like that. Could Tai Sabaki, I don't know, but could it be, from what you just said, it sounds like maintaining dominant head position. That's what you're doing. All... Footwork, all footwork is designed to allow me to maintain my dominant head position even as I move. There, so you see Mitch, as I move, he makes the micro adjustment. I move to there, if I move to here, he still makes the micro adjustment because the art of body is deception. He has perfect uh, default. If I need to attack him, I need to get off target. So if he doesn't react even minutely, then that's that's my advantage. I've moved out of his dead zone, but I've maintained mine through dominant head position. So all these footwork patterns allow me to move off by maintaining my dominant head position at all times. It's a good point. Uh, Bogdan Korsaho, that's the switch. Where the feet switch, but the upper body stays the same. Okay, and then you have the Okudi Ashi. That's the, uh, 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 the shuffle step. Half shuffle and full shuffle. Okay. But anyway, there you have it, guys. Any comments, Mitch? No, that was great to go through, and I appreciate the teachings. And I just really remember back in the 90s when I came to live in up there with you, and the amount of footwork you did was really mind blowing. Um, and it was evident by everyone that had been there and that I'd seen in gradings and tournaments over the years. It was a real difference. I, I, it was yeah. just different. Yeah, that's interesting because it was so normal to us that we didn't realise that it was actually so dominant in our training. I remember um, before I moved in, I went with Chris was up as a Nuchideshi Christian who's on now, and I did some training with him. I went up and he was there, and he just so different it yes. was amazing yeah. and that's one of the things that motivated me to think i've got to really learn this yeah. Was, yeah and you did a lot of training with christian actually well, yeah. yeah you and christian um not only good mates but you actually 
because you work so much together, your, your movements were quite I learned so much from him, yeah. And then same as um, all the other students that were there as well. Yeah. I worked um, superior to me. Mm. True. All right, look, I really appreciate everybody coming along. That's the five footwork patterns from the core 54. Okay, the split, okuriyashi, oyashi, uh, kosaho, and um, sabaki. They're the five that we do. So I hope you get something out of it. Go back, slow the video down, try to replicate them in the dojo and introduce them to your students as much as you can because without footwork, you have nothing. And like I say, uh, hip movement on the mat when you're grappling, hip movement is your footwork. When you're standing up, footwork is your hip movement standing up. So you really need to get those two in. And Mike, it's always a real um, honor to have you come along. Us. And I'm going to go and I'm going to look up uh, the word you mentioned there before, which is, was it tenshin? Tenshin, yeah. Simply means shifting movement. I'll actually do a bit of research on that. But I definitely won't come back and do a video on it. <laughs> Good on you. Thanks, guys. Hope you enjoyed it and look forward to seeing you next week. Awesome. Thank Thanks, you. Mitch. Appreciate it. Great to have you. Look at that pool. That's where we're going now. We need to go and have a swim and then jump in the jacuzzi up the other end. Good. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next week.